John, you are the neckbeards. No, John. You are the demons. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Maybe look it up on Urban Dictionary. We're trying to get the upvotes going on this Red X entry. I don't know what it does, but hey, it can't hurt. <laughs> Anyways, today we're jumping into r slash tales of neckbeards. Uh, sort of. It's a tale of a neckbeard, a couple of neckbeards that was posted in r slash Red X reads. I'm trying to get through these user submitted stories. Thank you guys so much for submitting them. I am sorting through them one by one, little by little, and I do plan to get to all of them eventually. So your patience is appreciated. It's super nice to be able to lean back and just be like, hmm, let's see what stories we got for me in here when uh, neckbeard stories and tales of neckbeards are both running a little dry, which they have been lately. I think that's largely due to the pandemic pandemic and stuff people haven't been getting out and about like they usually do especially neckbeards i mean neckbeards never get out and about <laughs> but what i'm trying to say is thank you my god i'm so rambly today i hope this is not a precursor of things to come let's let's just get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way and then we will jump right into some neckbeard cringe Neckbeard Wars, a ghost story. Ooh, spooky, maybe. <laughs> As usual, I haven't really vetted it. I just kind of made sure that it was legible. And I'm like, okay, let's dive on into it. <laughs> hey, I've been listening to all these videos every day while going to work. And it always makes my day shiny, bright and shiny. <laughs> Currently writing on mobile, and English is not my mother language, so I apologize for the inconvenience and potential mistakes. Don't worry about them potential mistakes. I'm going to try and reword it, as I tend to do, uh, if it doesn't come off right. <laughs> I'm here to tell you the tale about the time that I was surrounded by neckbeards, but I was surrounded for one simple reason. I was, and still am one, in a way. <laughs> John, you are the neckbeards. <laughs> Before getting to the main story, I need to give some background information. It's going to be a long backstory, but I think it's necessary to understand how I became that person. Well, if it's neckbeard related, tell me all about it, OP. I come from quite a humble family with not that much money. Therefore, my parents used to work quite a bit and didn't really have the time to take care of us. But I mean, I can't really blame them because they were working to pay the bills. <laughs> That's part of it. Then war came to our home country and we fled the country that me and my siblings had been raised in. War never changes. <laughs> they didn't speak the local language and they struggled financially as they had to basically start over from zero again. My mom used to work in a biscuit factory back then and could provide us with as many salty dried biscuits as we could possibly want. Since we had no money, these and dried cup of noodles became our main food every day for years until things finally got better. Ah uh, damn, this is rough already, dude. I hope you're doing better now. I hope your whole family's doing better now. I mean, obviously they don't want to live in the middle of a war, so it's good that they fled, but oh boy. That is, that is something that I hope never to have to experience. We lived in a very poor neighborhood, so it was quite common to see cockroaches everywhere. My brother stopped his studies in order to get a job and get money to feed us and provide more food for the family. He is my role model. He spent like 90% of his salary paying bills and 10% entertaining us. At the time, he bought some mangas and a Super Nintendo. Oh my God, the SMPS. <laughs> this is the beginning of my love for mangas, video games, and anime. At that time, everyone knows in the late 80s that loving manga, card games, and comics made you a geek. I mean, like, in a bad way. Or at least an awkward guy that most people don't want to be around. I kept watching my brother play games, and we both started learning Japanese and English this way. I was maybe six or seven at the time. As my diet was not really good, I started to become a bit fat. 
And of course, being of Asian descent, I got bullied at school. Because <laughs> surely I was practicing martial arts, <laughs> just like Bruce Lee, right? <laughs> and all Asian dudes have a small dick. Everyone knows that. And I was hearing this kind of shit every day, and teachers also used to make fun of my name because it's not easy to pronounce. Even the teachers, bro? I mean, it was the 80s. Basically, everybody was on cocaine anyways. <laughs> That's no excuse, but it is a reason. <laughs> the other school kids used to make me fight with other kids. I don't know, like kid stuff. I guess just because they were lacking hobbies. At some point, the guy that I was put into a fight with got fed up and started bullying the other kids that made us fight, and I became friends with that bully kid. We spent the following years during junior high school spending like all of our free time watching anime, mangas, and playing Magic the Gathering, D&D, &D, and video games. Yeah, dude, bro out. Everybody needs a friend. Just one. One really good friend. I'm not gonna lie. These were absolutely gorgeous years for me. Even though the other students told us that we were garbage or awkward or whatever. We didn't really give a shit. It was awesome playing Magic during recess. We spent so much quality time playing Goldeneye, Perfect Dark, and Smash Bros back then at my friend's place. Whoa, we just jumped forward like 15, 20 fucking years. <laughs> I thought this was from the 80s, and now we're talking about Smash Brothers? Bro. Don't do that shit to me, OP. Don't do that. <laughs> so now I guess we're in like the late 90s, early 2000s era. Which makes a little bit less sense that uh, everybody's being racist to this kid at school. In the 80s, okay, maybe, sure, I would have bought it because I wasn't around to see that shit for the most part. <laughs> but late 90s, early 2000s, I don't remember seeing anything like this. You're fucking white male! But there I go, off on a fucking tangent. Alright. <laughs> Back to the story. As mentioned before, my house was filled with cockroaches, but I didn't really know that cockroaches were that bad. I mean, they were here before us, right? And one day, a cockroach came out of my backpack. One girl saw it, and then I was nicknamed the cockroach guy, ew! And my group got bullied a bit more, but we didn't really care about our image anymore. My brother used his savings to send me to some martial arts classes so I could get ready to retaliate against bullies in the future. My family's economy did get better about this time, and we were able to eat normal food later on, as well as taking care of our cockroach issue. I want to point out that I was indeed fat. Maybe not because I was eating too much, but because I wasn't eating the right stuff. Dried biscuits, noodles, and fried chicken were not the healthiest options. It's a lot of carbs, bruh. Every time I got rejected or bullied, I was eating more dried biscuits to try and fill the giant hole in my heart where love should have gone, which of course only made me even fatter. That's a vicious cycle, OP. I'm glad your family's moving up, but yeah, you gotta move up with them, you know what I mean? I started getting into shape during high school. He knows what I mean. Look at him. Look, he's getting in shape! <laughs> Got some muscles, grew way taller, no more bullying. I changed my image and became a goth. Ugh. Stupid, I know, but still, no regrets. <laughs> I grew a ponytail as well, and of course, I wore a fedora. Oh, I bet you looked so dashing. <laughs> High school was great, and I don't really know why my image was getting better, but I guess that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I got friends from all types of group. The rap kids, goths, rich kids, etc. I was a virgin, and I didn't tell any of my friends this because they didn't ask. And because with the look that I was rocking at the time, I thought it was pretty obvious. <laughs> <laughs> no, you thought it was cool, OP. That's why you wore it, right? Come on. Just to let you know, I had not even kissed a girl. But people were always coming to me to confess their problems and ask for advice about dating. The story I remember the most is when one friend, really popular, and a neckbeard on the inside, he was a total geek but enjoyed sports and became quite good at basketball after junior high school. It is the beard on the inside that counts, but I mean, if he's really popular, he can't be like that terrible of a person, could he? I don't know. I can't pass my judgment given one sentence of information. <laughs> Anyways, this, this kid comes up to me and he asks me, Oh my God, OP, man, there's this girl. And she asked me out. She wants to go to the movies. Like, 
What should I do? Her name is Sandy. Wow, John Travolta. <laughs> I'll call this girl JG for jealous girl. Not because she was jealous, but because I was jealous. And this was actually a girl that I wanted to date. Did you sabotage him, OP? Inside, I was friggin' jealous, but so happy for my friends. Did you sabotage him? <laughs> Just to let you know, again, I have zero experience. I was barely able to talk to girls as I was extremely shy inside and basically just showed a confident face on the outside. All the experience that I know is from manga and movies such as Pretty Woman or Love Actually. These kinds of movies. Romance movies. And I still love them to this day. Hell yeah, dude. I cry at the notebook. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say so. But did you sabotage him though? <laughs> Let's get to the root of the issue. I gave my friend what I like to consider good advice. Aw, oh, see? OP's a nice guy. And I told him, get to the movies, and during the movie, look into her eyes. But not in a creepy way, please. And if she maintains eye contact, get your face closer to hers and try to kiss her. If she deflects and turns her cheek towards you, well, bro, you know what that means. And he replied, damn OP, your advice makes so much sense. Thanks, bro. He thanked me. And a few days later, he came back and told me it was a hit. They became a couple. Damn, old Pete, your advice is always so good. You probably kissed like so many girls, bro. I wish I had your experience. I didn't want to ruin his enthusiasm, so I just replied, Well, you know me, bro. <laughs> or do you? <laughs> he should have known that I was spending most of my free time playing Dungeons and Dragons watching animes and manga and comics, so I don't know what made him think that I was some sort of ladies' man, but hey, I ain't gonna correct him. In the end, high school did make me a better person. I was still a neckbeard since I didn't really know how to communicate with girls I was into. I didn't have any problem communicating with girls that I wasn't attracted to, but when I met girls I really liked, it was just showing the worst of me, and things got really cringy. <laughs> So that's the first part of this story. I know it was a long background story, but I needed to clarify in order to introduce you to the main dish, which will be the ghost beard that I met at university. I hope my writing was okay, and I'll submit the next part ASAP. Hope you enjoyed the story so far. You are an interesting case, OP, because you're basically only a neckbeard on the outside. If you were a true neckbeard to the core, you would have sabotaged your friend on that date. You would have tried to swoop in, take that girl from him, blah, blah, blah. But no, nah, you did the right thing. You're like, okay, bros before hoes. Let me share this uh, advice that I got from a movie with you. <laughs> Which, if it works, I guess whatever. We were all awkward little kids at one time, but I do appreciate, you know, sharing your, your story of the blossoming, the coming of age. And it seems like you were really able to find yourself in high school, you know? Brush off judgment from other people, which is always admirable they're like "Ooh, what are you playing magic you're a nerd whatever bro i like magic <laughs> sue me <laughs> so yeah overall i think op is a pretty cool dude i am curious as to his judgment on this other neck beard the neck beardiest of neck beards aka ghost beard so i guess we'll go ahead and just jump into the second part and see how it goes right now neck beard wars part two the Phantom Menace! No, wait, that's wrong. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Let's do the second part. And the main dish. A few new characters do need to be introduced. EF for Elf Friend. Since he looked like an elf and had really long hair. One of my best buddies to this day and awesomely smart. He managed to get into university four years early. That is pretty crazy. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, I got my four-year degree. I'm 22. He's like, cool, I'm 18. I got it already. And they still won't hire you because you don't have the experience. <laughs> God damn it. This isn't going to be a tangent about the, the school system. Here we go. GF is goth, friend, because he had long hair and was dressed with a long black coat and Doc Martens. He was awesome and smart as well. GG, goth girl, one girl that really changed my life and had to deal with the main story. And Ghostbeard. Well, you'll learn about him pretty soon. <laughs> that is quite an entrance. 
I don't have the words, just watch. <laughs> I entered university one year later than most other people. After graduating from high school, I still didn't know what to do, so I just worked here and there without knowing so much what I actually wanted to do. Nobody actually knows what they want to do after high school. That's why I went into the Navy, man. You just move in a direction. And as long as you're moving forward, they're all pretty good directions. Just, you know, keep on keeping on. After that year, however, I finally decided that I wanted to go to university and learn Japanese, of course. To give you some information about university students who are studying Japanese, it is just a nest of neckbeards. <laughs> that relates to yesterday's video. And I include myself in that statement. With all kinds of people having motivation to work in the country of the rising sun. Some worked really hard and studied well and achieved their dreams. Others were just here because they're foreigners, so it'll be totally easy to find a Japanese girl. Japanese girls like white meat. <laughs> With our big dicks and foreign looks, it'll be as easy as breaking an egg. High five, bro. <laughs> So yeah, there were obviously this kind of guy in there as well. Guys and girls, I mean. The legbeard package is indeed included. <laughs> Needless to say, many classes had a strange smell. <laughs> Winter was horrible, as we were not allowed to open the windows. <laughs> I guess it's more than a strange smell. It's an overwhelming smell that makes me want to stab my brain stem. <laughs> Our teachers told us, First year students, you are 1,000. By the end of the first semester, you will only be 400. And they were right. I totally fucked up my first year and had to restart everything all over again. University was nothing like high school. <laughs> True. You learn what you're willing to learn. If you skip classes, whatever, it's your choice. I have to tell you that in the country I live, public university is way cheaper than it is in the USA or in Japan. I was working two part-time jobs to pay my fees, so I just plain wasn't able to attend all of my courses. I restarted the year over, and this is where the real story begins. This time, I was prepared. I had some savings so I could focus purely on my studies and not have to work at the same time. I was seeing many people and making friends with most of the university. I mean, there are about 20,000 students in the university, and about 70% were girls. That seems inordinately high, OP. <laughs> but that might be what attracted the neckbeard. Who let that neckbeard in here? <laughs> as I was seen as a confident person, and I had lost quite some weight, I was awarded the title as the party organizer. I used to organize quite some parties at high school. I mean, literally like in the high school. We drank a whole bottle of Jack Daniels while making a barbecue at school, which of course all this was prohibited. And I ended up getting woken up in a tree on Friday morning in the schoolyard by the principal who was still wearing his pajamas. No way the principal came to school in his pajamas, bro. <laughs> this is a dream. <laughs> Did you have fun yesterday, OP? My first blackout. Maybe I'll tell that story another time. I don't know what subreddit that will fit into. <laughs> Anyways, I organized a party with all the first year students and maybe 70 people in a Japanese restaurant. We had some fun. I helped everyone who was shy to introduce themselves. I asked all the first year students to sniff some wasabi as a welcoming ritual. I know it's disgusting, but it was fun to see them comply. Bro, you're quickly turning into a piece of shit. Can I tell you're straight? <laughs> That's not cool. I was sad for OP when he was getting bullied, but as soon as he becomes the bully, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> Why would you do this? Maybe he's gonna get along swimmingly with this neckbeard. I, I guess we'll see. This is where I met him. Ghostbeard, or GB. Ghostbeard was not a typical neckbeard. He was skinny, had many anime t-shirts, he was tall and had sharp blue eyes, some neckbeard growing, but not really that much. He seemed friendly and introduced me to someone that he had just met as well. Elf friend! One of the best things that he actually ever did during his time with us. <laughs> I met goth friend as well there and many other people. We ended up becoming a huge group. 
We made a lot of parties, and Ghostbeard slowly but surely showed his true colors. I'm still trying to peel myself off OP making these kids sniff wasabi. I'm really mad at you, OP, just so you know. At first, Ghostbeard was really friendly. We were all having fun with each other, but, you know, it was friendly. <laughs> Sniffing wasabi, but it was friendly. You just make them do whatever, but as long as you say it's friendly at the end. <laughs> I drew a dick on his face, but it was friendly. <laughs> God. But Ghostbeard did not take these words in a funny and friendly way. He always looked shocked. <laughs> oh my God, this is the story where OP is actually worse than the neckbeard. I hate to call him out on it because it is a subscriber submitted story, but also I gotta call him as I see him. I pull no punches, okay? When taking pictures for some strange reason, Ghostbeard was always blurred on the final print of that photograph. He also had no smell. Oh my god! <laughs> Which is why I call him Ghostbeard. Oh, I thought he was like Whitey from Me, Myself, and Irene. Just an albino. This is much better. <laughs> he was a big fan of soccer and anime such as One Piece. His dream was to get a girl like Nami. Uh, big boobs and slender, for those who aren't familiar with One Piece, which includes myself, because that is way too much anime for me to sit down and actually commit to. <laughs> Anyways, university was tough. We were having fun, but we were also paying really close attention during our classes. Ghostbeard, however, was almost always on his phone or just generally not paying attention. Then he was always asking for our notes during classes. He used to say, It's not that I'm slow. It's just that time is going too fast for me. <laughs> <laughs> time dilation's a real bitch when you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a golden line. I think I would remember that quote forever. At the beginning, we didn't really mind all this. I mean, we were all friends, and that'd be great if we could all succeed together. But at some point, it definitely became annoying. While we all wanted to spend time studying, he always told us that we could do it later. Come on, it's boring. Let's get out and go somewhere. Huh? Bro, exams are coming up, you know? Yeah, it's okay. It's not gonna be that hard. <laughs> Ah, now we're seeing the neckbeard come out. That that lovely entitlement. He failed the first semester. It was just a total disaster. <laughs> That's okay. I just need to get good grades in the second semester. He told us. Uh, okay, if you say so, Ghostbeard. At some point, I was introduced to some other friends, and that made our group even bigger. We slowly started to notice some small, annoying behaviors from Ghostbeard, with him saying things such as, I'm just gonna use the Mario sound effects, GAY PEOPLE SHOOT ME! I don't want to say bad words, as I do not share these opinions, but yeah, not a good place for those type of comments. <laughs> I don't know if any place is a good place for those type of comments. He'd also say, Lesbians are sick! It's a disease! Etc. Are you sure that these are some small, annoying behaviors? <laughs> or are these, like, glaring personality flaws? <laughs> I know OP ain't from the US, but, you know, I do believe pretty heartily in freedom of speech and such. But I also believe in the freedom to uh, not have your bigoted opinion shoved down my throat and to pick the friends that I actually want to hang around with. Friends that represent me, which means <laughs> the first time. Boom, that's it. I ain't gonna see you no more. Ghostbeard got ghosted. <laughs> but I suppose that attitude towards friendship comes with age. When you're young, you want to have that big social circle and feel like the really cool guy and make them all snort wasabi. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm still not over it, OP. Ghostbeard's definitely worse than you are, but that's that's not a cool thing to do. I'm going on record. <laughs> Then, while having a small afternoon get-together drinking with some friends, Ghostbeard urged us to come with him to a bookstore. Come on, guys! You'll all get fat if you do nothing but stay here drinking! He said. Yeah, that's, that's okay, Ghostbeard. We're just chilling. No rush. 
we were having fun talking about life expectation you know being a 20 something ah uh, i remember it fondly <laughs> come on guys it's so nice outside we should go for a walk he insisted so we all decided to just comply and walk to the fucking bookstore with him then he bought his new one piece manga and told us okay see you later guys <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? You're leaving now? We were shocked. Yeah, I have one piece and now I'm gonna go read it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you want us to come with you if you're just gonna leave us after buying your manga? Oh, come on, you guys. You ruined the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's some good cringe, boy. <laughs> I have my manga. I'll just see you guys at school. And then he left. <laughs> we were a bit pissed off, but mostly disappointed to have left our nice little spot with our drinks. That is so self-centric and also an extremely insecure move. He doesn't want to go to the bookstore by himself, so instead he uproots this entire group of friends to go with him. And as soon as he gets what he wants, he's just like, Okay, see you later. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, he's detestable. I don't even know if he realizes how detestable he is, but my god. <laughs> I hope you got some more drinks. I hope you salvaged the day. He always showed up late for movies as well. Like 20 minutes or more. Sorry guys, <laughs> I had some issues finding a parking spot. We sighed, but at some point, it was just no use. He was a very bad liar. Oh yeah, that dang parking spot. And we called him out and said, you came by Subway. How could you have any trouble finding a parking spot? <laughs> well, I had to park my car near that subway station. Driving a car myself, I know that at this subway station, it is basically always empty. I know that for sure. <sighs> Anyways, he was also the worst driver ever. You know what a keyboard warrior is, right? Those people who feel mighty invincible trolling people through their computer. Well, Ghostbeard was a wheel warrior. <laughs> An absolutely evil driver who would always honk at people, drive over the speed limit, and just swore all the time at other people. Get off my road, you bitch! Fuck your mothers! <laughs> you eat my shit! <laughs> Unfortunately, he and I were the main drivers for our group. Other friends had no car, so... Sometimes friends would just refuse, flat out refuse, to get in his car. And I would have to drive the entire route twice to pick everyone up. Oh god, what a pain in the ass. Alright, you win some wasabi points back for that one, OP. That is <laughs> above and beyond the Call of Duty. At the end of the day, I don't blame them. I understood their worries. Nobody wants to die <laughs> because some maniac is at the wheel. We all went to a convention and had a lot of fun buying manga and all the stuff that we do as manga lovers and we all separated that evening some of us wanted to end the convention by eating in a nice diner with some burgers but ghostbeard had spent all his money on anime paraphernalia and just couldn't join us the day after at the university he got a black eye <laughs> is that related <laughs> he got kicked by a junior high school student and got all of his stuff taken away <laughs> <laughs> oh boy sucks to suck i guess we did sincerely feel bad for him but we could not understand how a 22 year old man could be beaten into the ground by an extremely young neckbeard like 16 17 years old if you're 22 you should not be losing to a 16 year old okay you are bigger you are stronger anyway speaking of that we later found out from the exam board that his age wasn't even 22. <laughs> <laughs> he reassured us that it was just a mistake and he would ask for that to be changed. Turns out it was not a mistake. This guy was 28, not 22. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you even lie about it? Jesus. When he told us he wanted to date a Japanese schoolgirl because they're cute and innocent. We found that kind of cute and creepy. Now we just find it completely creepy. It was creepy the entire time. That's that's not acceptable. 
<laughs> it's fine to have your little fantasies and play pretend, but she's just a child, god damn it. You're 28. Leave that girl alone. So many stories, man. They just went on and on. Of course, he failed the second semester. Let me explain how. Elf friend, goth friend, and some other friends, as well as me, were all studying while Ghostbeard was just sitting around watching something on his smartphone. The next exam was about marketing, and it was tough. Hey, Ghostbeard, you should study a bit. This exam matters a lot. You should try and get at least like a 50 out of 100, I said. Nah, I'm gonna focus on Japanese conversation and get a 100 out of 100, he replied. You know that Japanese conversation is coefficient 1, right? Marketing is coefficient 2, so... Even if you get a 100 in Japanese conversation and a 30 out of 100 in marketing, you will still not pass the final exams. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'll be fine, he replied with an extremely cringy smile on his face. <laughs> I'll finish the marketing exam quickly and then I'll just work on my Japanese exam, he added. All good, bro. Up to you. I can't live your fucking life for you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so we all packed up our stuff and got to the marketing exam, which was supposed to last about two hours, which meant that we probably wouldn't be able to leave until at least an hour and 30 minutes later. That was just common sense for me and the other friends and basically anybody with two brain cells to rub together. But that does not include Ghostbeard. <laughs> Once we arrived and sat down, I just felt like I should remind him about my concerns. By the way, Ghostbeard, you do know it's supposed to last two hours, right? Yeah, of course. That'll give me plenty of time to focus on Japanese when I leave the class. He replied. Um, you know that teacher, Mr. M? He'll probably not let us leave until at least an hour is up. I just heard, One hour! I turned back. Ghostbeard was supposed to be behind me. And I tried to add, By the way, you should... But he was already gone. <laughs> Living up to his namesake, I see. <laughs> you know when in some, like, Looney Tune cartoons, some of them characters are speeding so fast that you just see dust kicking up from where they formerly were? Well, that was exactly what had happened to Ghostbeard. Or, like, in Naruto, I think it was Kage Bushin no Jutsu, when one character vanished in one second and was just replaced with a piece of wood, that was it. <laughs> I mean, his head's basically a block of wood anyways, isn't it? You replace one piece of wood with another piece of wood. What's the difference? <laughs> All of us just saw that dust floating down as he magically disappeared in like less than one second. Well, turns out the exam was a Q&A. Difficult one, but still manageable if you knew your stuff. You'd get one point for each correct answer, minus two points for each thing you got wrong. Since we all worked and knew our stuff, we were able to finish pretty quickly. We actually finished the entire exam in 15 minutes. We went into the cafeteria to see him just totally shocked. What the hell? How did you guys get out so quickly? He yelled. Well, turns out the test was Q&A and we didn't have to stay if we had already finished, said Elfriend. It was quite easy, in fact, Gothfriend added. Ghostbeard turned red, totally mad, at me. <laughs> <laughs> no personal responsibility here. Oh my god! I knew I had to take it! It's OP's fault if I don't succeed! <laughs> I shouldn't have listened to him and now I'm screwed! We could not believe it. At this point, I have no expectations regarding Ghostbeard. But Elfriend, who was about 10 years younger than this guy, and is usually the one defending him and trying to find him excuses, totally lost it and explained in a very strict but calm voice, Listen, it's time to take charge of your responsibilities and face up to them like a human being. OP has nothing to do with your test results. You are failing because you were too lazy to work. Last time you told us, Oh, you couldn't work because you're still shocked about Michael Jackson versus death. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yes, that is a true explanation he gave. The next time you couldn't study because your favorite soccer team lost a match. Grow up. Grow some balls. Seriously. I couldn't hear the rest of the scolding, but mainly this is what was said. And I was laughing so freaking much. <laughs> and you know what? He also failed his Japanese exam. 
<laughs> and did not succeed in any of his classes. I mean, OP can't laugh too hard. Didn't didn't OP fall on his face because he's working and shit? But yeah, I guess I guess working and failing is different than just being a lazy slouch and failing. <laughs> So that was the end of the first year for us, but not for him. And not the end of the story, as I'll write the second part of this saga if you're interested to know what happened with Goth's girlfriend. Monumental story. Let me know if you're enjoying the story so far. Cheers from a neckbeard in Japan. Because yeah, I ended up working in Japan years later. Well, congratulations for achieving the dream and such. I hope you aren't making any of your Japanese co-workers snort wasabi. I'm sorry for calling you a piece of shit. In the end, you, you did turn things around, okay? It's just one bump in the road. We're all young. We all make mistakes. I hope you won't hold it against me that I held that against you, all right? <laughs> I definitely appreciate the story. It was certainly a good amount of cringe, more than I expected, but it's it's the light kind of cringe, you know? After the heavy cringe that we had while digging through r slash neckbeard nest yesterday, I think we needed some lighter stories, so I definitely do appreciate this. Obviously, you can post the other parts. I would much appreciate it if they are related to Neckbeards or one of the other subreddits that I can attach it to. That would be cool. Otherwise, you know, it might take me a while because I'm trying to find a place to, to put it and whatnot. Ghostbeard is definitely a character. I hope if you do write another story, it includes more Ghostbeards. <laughs> <laughs> goth girlfriend like okay if it's cringy i'll read it you know but i'm not so much into uh just a love story i want the neck beards in there or maybe goth girlfriend's a leg beard i don't know i guess we'll have to wait and find out but i definitely appreciate you sharing with us user wandering black cat and uh as always my subreddit is open to absolutely anybody who would like to share some stories with me it is always massively appreciated i mean without stories we basically don't have a channel so thank you to anybody who has posted i hope that you guys will like comment and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video maybe share it around this could this could be a pretty good entry into neckbeards you know it's just a light little bit of cringe you know somebody in college you know somebody beardy just just slip this their way slip this in the dms whatever post it on the facebook the twitter what have you I'd appreciate all that stuff. I would also appreciate if you check out the link in the description, or links rather, there's actually a whole shit ton of them. <laughs> We've got uh, my Amazon affiliate link, basically kicking me some dosh. Anytime you buy something from Amazon, as long as you click that link first and use that tab, then I get like a little scratch from it, which is pretty cool. As I mentioned, we've got my subreddit, r slash redxreads. We've got wifey's channel. We did r slash tinder. You'll also see that in a pinned comment. whoop de whoop Then there's the social media stuff. You know, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Discord, all that sort of happy stuff. Oh, and how could I almost fake forget about my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons? Josh K, currently the highest donator. He is the king, but... I mean, all of my patrons, equally important. Thank you all so, so much. But I would like to thank, quite specifically, Zero MMX, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Fair, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Josh K, Candy Sora, DigiNZ, Fire Drake, Little Lone Wolf, Lone Island, Shara, Marvy DeMoth, Miss Monday, Silent Revolver, JM Coon, Leon Embers, Ryan Kirby, Redwind, and Synaptic Boomstick. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said in the Discord that uh, the last patron is lucky because they get a little more oomph on the name. And I guess that is true. That's a good reason to sign up as any. <laughs> <laughs> I should randomize the list at some point, but I think that would boggle my brain. <laughs> Obviously, the Patreon, super, super important, you guys. Some videos do get demonetized, and it's just really nice to be able to lean back and not sweat that as hard. It's really hard to tell what works and what doesn't these days i mean moon horse even had some trouble we were talking about that on discord a couple days ago oh lord youtube is a volatile place to work but i wouldn't have it any other way and thank you guys for supporting me when it does go tits up <laughs> obviously anybody else who can support that is massive massively appreciated thank you in advance but if you can't right now, don't worry about it, guys. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because really, the views is, is how my beard gets buttered. In order to join us again, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands for super cereals. <laughs> but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy 
today. Maybe watching uh, another Red X video. I think I plugged my r slash neckbeard nest video like three, four times. I'll plug it one more time. Go watch that. It's pretty all right. <laughs> and of course, always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, bye-bye.